everybody, and welcome back to another episode of 5-Minute Gaming News, the show that's here for another week. Today in the news, we're getting another one of these. That's right, a new Witcher game is on the way. I know, what? While absolutely nothing of importance is known yet, aside from the logo and a new saga begins, the implications are pretty cool. Do we follow another Witcher? Is it time for Ciri to go on adventures of her own? Maybe Geralt is headed off to another journey somewhere else. The medallion here clearly isn't our boy Geralt's, and it certainly isn't Ciri's cat school medallion, but honestly, who knows? The thing we do know is that they are moving from the Red Engine to Unreal 5 and beginning a multi-year partnership with Epic Games. Now, I'm sure the minute some of you heard that, you were like, oh no, is this gonna be an Epic exclusive? But at least on Twitter, they have said it is not exclusive to any storefront. And if it was, surely GOG would be the place that got it first, right? Anyway, that's all we really know, except that they are still working on the Cyberpunk expansion and it will be coming out. And hopefully with it, some renewed hype for Cyberpunk because they're working really hard to make this expansion kind of like a, hey, come back and play. And honestly, I think people should because the game had a lot of problems, that's true, but it's still, it's still fun, man. It's still a fun game. And I was just talking with a friend the other day who messaged me like, I don't know who else to tell this to, but like, I really enjoyed Cyberpunk. And I was like, I know, right? Anyway, all I'm saying is, I hope people give it a shot. And it also begins my campaign to get a role in this game too. I've been a troll that farts, I've been a guy whose dick explodes. What does the future hold, I wonder? <laughs> so a few weeks back, I was over on Reddit and I saw a lot of hate for Lost Ark and I couldn't figure out why because it seemed like a lot of people were playing it and enjoying it and I was really confused. I saw a lot of people say, this is pay to win now, this sucks. I had no idea what was going on. So I went over to Twitter and just asked all y'all, what, <laughs> what is happening? And thankfully, you have your pulse on the gaming world sometimes better than I do. So yeah, shout out to everyone who replied and gave me some really awesome answers. Basically, what had happened was the first big update for Lost Ark was actually all sorts of different previous updates that existed, but weren't released in the West. So years of content was dropped in players' laps, and almost all of it required a higher gear score than what the vast majority of players had. And apparently, and again, I, I haven't played this game, but many of you have, if you wanted to hit the item level required to do this new stuff, you either had to craft insanely hard to get ingredients that might not even work, or spend real money to catch up. So you can see how a lot of people might be pissed. Well, Amazon has finally come out with a statement, and it's basically... Whoops. In a message from the team over on the Lost Ark website, they essentially say that they were a little too quick to dump all that content and didn't really think about it. We made the mistake of releasing the March game update too quickly after launch. Data we analyzed alongside Smilegate RPG from their previous launches projected that a larger portion of players would have reached the level required to challenge Argos, which I, I assume is the new content. However, we overlooked certain variables such as players spending more time on horizontal content and the price of honing materials increasing due to bots and real money transactions. They went on to explain there would be an update in which we would see various changes, such as the honing, which I guess is crafting, and PVP rewards. And so essentially they just appear to have misjudged the whole situation, but I also have to wonder how much of that was a misjudgment and how much of that was like, you know what, we could use some extra bucks if they wanna pay extra bucks. Anyway, at the moment it appears that the solution is going to be, they're gonna still look into it and then they're gonna give you some free gifts because the Korean players got those gifts for the celebration of new players joining and they're just gonna give them to you too. But I don't think anything here really solves the core problem of what I seem to understand, which is just serious FOMO. People want to play new content, they can't play new content, and in order to do so, they have to either spend a lot of time playing the game or pay for it. And honestly, neither of those sound good to me. So I guess we'll see what you think in the comments below, and we'll also see what players think over the next few weeks and months. And finally, since it's Monday, let's talk releases. Tomorrow, Rune Factory 5 is here. I never thought I'd say that. A new adventure in the RPG franchise allows players to farm, fight, fish, and is filled to the brim with all the husbandos and waifus you could want. And as is tradition, your character can't remember anything of their past. So Rune Factory is 
back in full form. Thursday! Horror fans will get a chance to check out Tiny Build's newest frozen terror, Expedition Zero. Search for a lost expedition, run from a mysterious monster, discover dark secrets. I expect to see many a Let's Play. On the totally opposite side of the gaming world, coming out the same day, Annapurna releases its newest, a memoir, Blue. The story of a young woman who reflects on her childhood and mother through swimming the depths of her memory. Like, actually swimming. She's a swimmer. It's pretty neat. Friday, Ghost Wire Tokyo is here. The Dishonored-esque horror game about making your way through the occult world of Tokyo, its population missing, and in its place, nasty, awesome monsters. Look at them. They're so cool. On the same day... Tiny Tina's Wonderlands is out. The character that launched Ashley Birch to stardom and made us all laugh every time she was on screen is back. And this time DMing an all new Borderlands style D&D campaign featuring characters from the series as well as all the other things you can expect from Borderlands. You know what this franchise is. Also competing for your attention on Friday is Kirby in the Forgotten Land. Our pink powerhouse is back and using mouthful mode to run rampage on the ruins of a past civilization, confirming that Kirby is in fact the future of mankind. Kirby is us. We are Kirby. Accept it. Anyway, that is it for today's episode. Thank you again for all the comments and the likes and the shares and the thumbs up and the whatevers. Anything you can do to support this show means the world to me. Seriously. Also... Thank you to those of you over on patreon.com slash Jesse Cox. You mean the world to me too. Especially De Avedas, Gostadas, Yel, Gonzevels, Gonzevle. I, boy, I hope I said those two correctly. And lastly, our bedwetter who may or may not be a sissy. Can I say that? What are the rules now? It's your name. <laughs> I just don't. Am I, am I going to get canceled? What is. Anyway. That's it for this episode. Thank you all so much, and I'll see you tomorrow.